Welcome back to the Challenger Podcast. On this week's episode, I want to share more of the journey to understanding my anger in its cleanest form, as it is a messenger for me to listen for more of what's behind that emotion. I used to turn to anger first in almost every situation, projecting my anger onto others as if it were entirely their fault and their responsibility to own the reactions that I felt. Then I learned that there was a cleaner version of anger, a version that is felt as a messenger and not definitively my truth. Anger is a secondary emotion and oftentimes is covering up something deeper and more real deep inside of me. I've approached my anger in a different way since recognizing this along the way. I've approached anger with a curious question. What are you here to teach me? Most of the time, anger showed up for me to cover up and yet alert me that there was fear, guilt, shame, and hurt lying underneath my initial reaction. Now I can listen to my anger and relate to others in many ways without blowing my top off and share what is truly underneath the anger. And those phrases now generally sound like, I'm angry because I'm hurt. I'm angry because I'm sad. I'm angry because I'm afraid. I'm angry because I'm guilty. Now, how does anger show up for the challenger? If you've been tuning into the podcast for any time now, you would have heard me say that our Enneagram types are solidified in our late teen years or early adulthood um, by an instance of trauma or a series of trauma. So our Enneagram type becomes solidified as a result. It's there to keep us safe as a young person in the environments that we spend the most of our time with. I want to give you a heads up in the next minute or so. There may be a trigger for some people. I'm going to share a little bit about um, what I've uncovered as the challenger personality type became solidified for myself. So if you'd like to fast forward and you don't want to hear information about sexual assault and the trauma that is associated there, please just skip forward 30 seconds to a minute. And I'm going to give you about 10 seconds of silence in order to do that. I can remember the exact moment that the challenger personality type became solidified for myself. At the age of 17, a family friend uh, sexually assaulted me on a holiday that our families were spending together. I repressed a lot of that anger and I repressed a lot of the emotions that were associated with that specific instance. A couple years later, I shared the experience with my parents and yet this family friend was still invited to and allowed to participate in family events for the next 20 plus years. It wasn't until around the time that I was 36 that I finally understood why anger was showing up for me so much so often. It's because I was hurt. It's because I was having feelings of betrayal for 20 plus years. So that's what I mean by saying that this particular instance of trauma in my life was the moment that the challenger personality type became solidified for me. Now, as you can imagine, the challenger personality type has a very intense fear of being vulnerable and of being hurt. Over the next two decades, I could find myself repeating the pattern of pushing people away, keeping them at a distance so that I would not become hurt again. And as I progressed onward into a personal growth journey, uh, I found the Enneagram, I found a relationship with God again, and I began to peel back the layers of decades worth of hurt that have been protecting me and yet hanging me out to dry. So what I've uncovered in the last couple years, it took a global pandemic for me to do this, is that there were feelings of betrayal that made me hold on to that anger for 20 plus years. And the betrayal was, yes, partially because of the family friend, but more so because I was shown an example by trusted caregivers that when I shared my truth, there were no boundaries set in place for the family friend to no longer be a part of our world. And what do you think that that teaches somebody? It teaches somebody that their voice doesn't matter. It teaches somebody that boundaries are not important and that if you want to experience love in this world then you need to abandon yourself and abandon your own safety. Francis Weller really defines it very very well. 
and he's, he's quoted as saying, trauma is a psychic wound that hardens you psychologically that then interferes with your ability to grow and develop. It pains you and now you're acting out of pain. Trauma is not what happens to you, it's what happens inside of you as a result of what happened to you. And that's something that helps me summarize the feelings of betrayal that I held so deeply within myself and suppressed for so long. The feelings of betrayal by my caregivers who didn't show me what healthy boundaries were. Which then led me to, over time, continuously repeat patterns through my attachment style. Yes, I have a fearful avoidant attachment style and, and that becomes clearer and clearer to me the more I peel back layers of the trauma experience that my, my central nervous system held onto and my memories held onto as well. So as a fearful avoidant, I swing back and forth from the avoidant to the anxious attachment style depending on the polarity of the partnership that I'm in. If my partner is anxious, then I become avoidant. If my partner is avoidant, then I become anxious. And it's continuously perpetuating that pattern of angst and unknown and of feelings of lacking safety in an environment. So the challenger personality type and my avoidant attachment style pair up to be a double-edged sword in order to prevent me from being vulnerable and to develop deep, intimate relationships. And I'll close out our conversation today uh, with a quote from Aristotle. Anybody can become angry. That is easy. But to be angry with the right person and to the right degree and at the right time and for the right purpose and in the right way, that is, that is not within everybody's power and is not easy. And I bring up to illustrate that our anger can come out in so many different ways. It can come out in rage. It can come out in passive aggressive shutdown. It can come out in stonewalling our partner. And Aristotle makes a very good point that understanding how anger shows up in your body, whether that be a tightness in your gut, a pressure in your chest, or a fullness in your, in your head space, how do we express that anger? How do we let it come out in a healthy and clean way? When I am triggered to feel anger, it's my responsibility and my ownership to understand where is that coming from. I'll feel it in my gut. I'll feel it instinctually that it's not anger that is causing me to react to my partner. It's actually the fear the shame, the guilt, the betrayal, or the hurt that's underneath that anger. Anger is there to protect us, but vulnerability is what brings us closer together to one another. And that self-leadership piece is tuning into our body's response to external stimuli, Recognizing that anger is the first place that the challenger personality type goes to as being a part of the body-centered triad, along with the nine and the one, those three types tend to go towards anger first. Self-leadership is asking myself, what is behind this anger? Self-leadership to me is asking myself, what is this anger trying to teach me? And oftentimes in um, de-escalating a conflict or argument with a partner now or a partner in the past, are you angry? No, I'm not angry. And that was the truth. The truth was that in the moment, I wasn't angry. I might have been angry at myself for abandoning my own needs, abandoning my own wants and desires, but I wasn't mad at the other person because it's not about the other person. It's about what triggered me, not who triggered me. So this is me taking back my power and being completely self-led when it comes to the context of anger and in relationship. Anger is the secondary emotion that's most likely for me covering up shame. I'm angry with myself. It's covering up guilt. I'm angry at myself for what I did. It's covering up hurt. I'm angry at you for hurting me. However, where is that hurt coming from? Is it coming from my past? Is it coming from my limiting beliefs? Is it coming from my own fear? It's completely acceptable. Anger is a valid emotion. 
But as I said before, it's the second one. What's causing that anger? What is the real emotion that's causing the anger? If you're looking for a little bit more support right now, uh, getting in touch with what's behind the anger or you're in relationship with somebody who has a tendency to go straight to anger, join us for a free week in our group coaching program uh, before the subscription price goes up in August. It's free for a week and then it's only $37 a month after that when you sign up in the month of July. I'll also welcome you to a 60 minute uh, onboarding call with me so that we can understand a little bit more about what brings you to the group, what you wanna get out of it, and strategies to put into place so that you can achieve those goals. If you got a ton of value out of today's episode, please leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. And please share this episode with one person you feel would get a lot of value out of the conversation. Until next week, this is Dave Glazer in Denver, Colorado, wishing you health and happiness wherever you're at in the world.